Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can emphasize your animations in iClone. So the scene you see on the screen right now, this is from a TV show called Spartacus, one of my favorites. And often in the show they use a technique where they uh, use slow motion to really emphasize certain movements or blood splashes and all that stuff. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to recreate that in iClone. So let's go to our iClone scene here first. And I have this scene set up here, just a couple of uh, trees on top of this uh, mountain we got a nice sunset in the background there we're going to be using our character our boy Trenton from our tessellation power pack here so I'm going to go to actor and project Trenton down here and just click and drag our friendly neighborhood barbarian into the scene here and so what we're going to do is we're going to have this guy do a couple of uh, crazy moves and uh, similar to like a Spartacus uh, style move and we're going to just get to that in just a moment but first of all what I want to do is give this guy an axe so for his axe you can actually go into the avatar section and under accessories You'll find another Project Trenton folder, and you can just double click the axe because this is actually his accessory and it'll apply directly to his hands. And you can see currently his hand is not really clasping it, but we'll get to that in just a bit. What I want to do first is apply a quick motion that I, uh, I saved previous to this, and this is a Motion Plus file. Uh, in case you're unfamiliar, Motion Plus files include body and facial animation, and I've saved this previously, so I'm just going to start it off with this animation because it's kind of cool. So we'll go to animation in my custom folder. I have a motion plus folder and this means war. So I'll just uh, go ahead and click and drag that this onto means war. Trenton. So he's, he's about to, uh, you know, bust out his crazy move right there. And we have the, uh, the dangerous sounding voice there. That's actually my voice pitched down a little bit. Um, but we're just going to, after that, let's press F3 and go into our timeline. And you can see we have this, this means war in our motion track. Um, if I hold the alt key and scroll down my mouse button, we can zoom out of the timeline here and uh, you can zoom out a little bit. And we can also go from here under Trenton's tracks, we can go to the Visim track right here. And you can see that we have this Visim. And we twirl that down, you can see the audio file. And in here, we also have all of the uh, you know separate Visim keyframes for the different uh, facial keys. Um, so let's take a look at that really quick before we move on. Um, so he starts off with a T, so this right here. This means war. And right when he's saying war, let's take a look at the, uh, his face a little bit closer. So this means war all, and then there's the O keyframe right here. So if you double click that, you can see which keyframe is being selected here. It's the OH. We can change that to an R or an OH or anything like that. Um, this one's the woo, and then he goes war like that and kind of you know cricks his neck and everything like that so and then here he says this means war like that so basically you can just you know put different keyframes in your track um it'll do an automatic lip sync for you but you can also add and uh, subtract different keyframes as well so that's your kind of brief look at the uh, facial animation we'll do a little bit more of that later on in just a sec but first of all what i'm going to do is after he's finished saying this is war we'll this back. means war so right here, what I want to do is I want to start his running animation. And I'm going to go to my uh, motion uh, section here in the templates. And we'll go to motion. I'm going to use a uh, an animation from our Adventure Movies content pack. This Escape Run. I think this one's pretty cool. This is Being uh, being Chased 01. You can see we can apply that once. And Trenton starts running. Apply it one more time. And he'll continue running. And let's apply it, apply it one more time for good measure there. So we can see he'll run uh, three different loops. And let's go back to the beginning and zoom out a little bit and take a look at the entire animation here. This means war. And he starts running like that. But take a look at his run. Uh, it's a little bit uneven at certain this points. This means war. Yeah, that's just a lot, I guess. Um, so right there and right there. You can see it kind of like is a little bit jittery. So what I'm going to do is press F3 and go into the timeline. We can close down our Visim track right now. And you can see our motion uh, clips right here. We have the This Means War. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. This Means War right there. And then it blends into these three running clips. And now from here to here, you'll see it's a little bit off. So what I'm going to do, since these clips are actually perfectly loopable, what I'm going to do is select this clip right here. And we don't need this transition area. That's why it's slowing down a little bit because it's trying to calculate a transition. But the loops are actually perfectly loopable. So we don't need the transition. They'll just you know go from one to the other. We do need a transition from here to here. And you can see that uh, if we uh, start right here, now his run is a lot smoother. So let's take a, qu a closer look at that first transition though. So all the way down here, 
let's just take a look at when he starts running. So that's from here, and the transition area will be from here to here. Take a look at his feet. You can see his feet kind of slide back, which looks a little bit weird like that. So what I can do to change that is I can actually use a transform keyframe to uh, adjust the root. So each different motion clip will have a different root. So what I'm going to do is double click on this, uh, the beginning of the transition right here, and add a transform keyframe. And then right here, at the beginning of the clip, the very beginning of the clip, I'm going to move it a little bit forward, something like that. So he's not sliding back so much. And let's take a look at what that does. So he starts just like that. We can even maybe, uh, this one, we can move him a little bit further forward. So he'll end up like this, like that. There you go. So he's not sliding back and say he's just kind of, you know, gaining his footing and just starting to uh, move forward like that. So that's how you can avoid, you know, s certain types of uh, foot sliding and everything like that. So let's zoom out and take a look at uh, the, our entire sequence of run here. Our entire running sequence, sequence of run. Let's play back. This means war. Okay, so he starts running. And then at, here, at this point here, we wanted to do another move. And this move is going to be a cool sword move that we can find in our action movie uh, pack right here. I'll double click that, go to my sword combat, and we'll use attack um, zero 09, somewhere around here. There we go. So I'll just double click that, and he'll stand up, gain his composure, and do a cool little axe turn, and then go off the screen like he doesn't want to be seen anymore. So let's go back to the beginning here, and let's focus on this area right here. So we can zoom in a little bit. And you can see from here, he'll start running and then you know, just stand up and then, hmm, well, I guess I better do my move now. And then kind of stand up and do his move. We don't want that. We want him to kind of transition directly from the run into the move. So let's pay uh, close attention to his feet here. Uh, you can see in this run, his right foot is, or right foot, left foot is being planted there, sorry. Left foot, there we go. Left foot is being planted and then his right foot is being planted right here. And he's about to go to his left foot again. And let's take a look at the motion, uh, the axe attack when it begins. So you can see his left foot is planted right here and his right foot is kind of just swinging around. So what we want to do is go to about here and I want to right click on this clip and I want to break it and then just delete the first part right here. And then at this part we need to find a place where his left foot is planted and his right foot is coming forward so about here and then I want to break that as well and then delete the second part. And let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to move this second clip over to transition with the first clip. So we'll have something like this. Zoop. And it'll, don't pay attention to the sliding right now. It'll just, you know, go from one foot to the other foot, like there. And that's what we want. So again, this is a, a problem here with the uh, transform root or the uh, motion clip root. So what I can do is just uh, at this point here again, do the same thing. Just double click on our transform track. And we might even want to add in some sort of prop here to indicate where we are, uh, where his original position is as a sort of a dummy. So we can go to props and 3D blocks. I can just go ahead and add in a sphere right to about there. And you can see that's going to indicate where he was at the beginning of the slide. And then let's go back a little bit and just select Mason there. Make sure you have object related track as well selected. This one I'm uh, hovering over right now. And that'll select any object that you have selected in your timeline. So again, right here, that's the beginning of the transition. And then right here, at the very beginning of this clip, we want him to be moving back to the same position. So let's go to about right there. And we want him to be a little bit forward because he's kind of taking a little step, like a mini step. And let's take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to delete that sphere right now since we don't need it any longer. Okay, let's just select uh, Mason. I mean, not uh, Mason, Trenton again. And so he'll just uh, kind of Go like that. Let's, take, let's uh, play this back in real time here. So it looks okay. Maybe we can have a little bit further ahead at this frame right here. Maybe something like that. And let's take a look here. So oh, maybe too far ahead. Let's uh, go to here and bring it back a little bit. That should be good. There you go. So now he's. we don't see any foot sliding. We see him just kind of whoop, and then doing his twirl right there. So let's play that back in real time. Okay, it looks good enough for me. So let's go then, and we want to emphasize this axe turn now. So we want to emphasize it. We want to put it into slow motion for maybe about this position here. Uh, so we can just right-click and break that clip. And then we can go all the way to this position here. And then before he brings his axe down like that, so maybe to here, we can uh, right-click there and uh, break that clip. So this section of the clip is the section that we want to really um, 
emphasize. We want to slow it down. So I'll take this, you know, third section of the clip here and bring it over there. Select the section, uh, second section here and make sure we have the, uh, speed, um, toggled on instead of the looping for our clips. So select speed and then we can just, you know, stretch it out to there, for example, and then we can move this over here and let's take a look at what that looks like in real time. So then he kind of just, you know, does his slow motion twirl like that. We have the right, if we have the right camera angle, it'll look pretty cool. So, and then, but then you can see he kind of brings his axe down in a little bit of a weak fashion, like just, you know, let me just tap you on the head with my axe. He's trying to chop somebody. So we want him to have more energy right here. So at the beginning of the clip, we can uh, actually increase the amount of action happening by using time warp. So I'm going to right click on this final clip now and use time warp right here. And then I'm going to use this uh, Ease Out. Uh, I'm going to go to Custom first just to show you what Ease Out is in case you're not familiar with this. So Time Warp, uh, Linear Time Warp means the action in this clip is going to just, you know, go in a linear fashion from beginning to end. However, if we use something like Ease Out, whoops, Ease Out rather, um, we're going to have a lot more action happening in the front, front of the clip. And then it's going to kind of ease out. There's not going to be much motion happening closer to the end of the clip. So that means the stuff that happens in this section of the clip is going to happen a little bit faster. Let's play back, play that back in real time and take a look. Boom. So you can see now the axe comes down a lot faster. And we can even increase the curve, curve of that. So like maybe something like, uh, this will be a little bit extreme, almost cartoon like. Boom. So a little bit too fast like that. Um, a little bit too fast. We'll probably want to keep it, you know, somewhere a little bit more reasonable. Um, 60, 50 or 60% or something like that. So there we go, that we have that nice kind of um, axe attack right there, zoom, just like that. Okay, so let's close this down now, and I'm going to go, go ahead and take a look at the very beginning of the uh, clip, beginning of our motion here, and uh, you'll notice one thing with his axe. Um, pay close attention to the way he runs from the beginning. Uh, let's go ahead and back to the uh, beginning frame here, and zoom out a little bit. So take a look in slow motion after he says this means war, and then he'll start running, and then whoops, his axe kind of just goes through his legs. So if he was running with a sharp object like this, he'd probably um, be taking off his own leg right there with this with this axe. So we don't need to do that, not at this point at least anyways. So what we want to do is at the very beginning, when he starts running, the very first clip, what I want to do is I want to use our motion key editor, the very first frame of our very first clip here, and I want to go ahead and adjust his uh, posi the position of his arm there. So if I select him, I can go to our uh, motion section up here. Let's bring the timeline over here, and then edit motion layer. And this is where you can uh, you know edit your character's bone positions uh, frame by frame. So here, I'm just going to make that bone size a little bit smaller here. He's annoyingly large at this point, so I'll just go to one, and so we can see his big muscles. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is move his arm position, his forearm position. So I'm going to select his right forearm, use the E hotkey, and rotate it a little bit out like this. And then I want to take his wrist and maybe uh, rotate that as well a little bit over here. So he's he's almost hitting his head pretty close. <laughs> he's almost stabbing his own head again. It's pretty hazardous to be running with this axe, I guess. So at this point, let's take a look at his motion now. So, um, oops. What we forgot to do is we forgot to actually put a, a, a motion layer keyframe before that. So let's go ahead into uh, Trenton's tracks and let's find the motion layer track right here. And you can see in the motion layer track, if you twirl it down, you can get torso, head, arm, and everything like that. We're just going to mess around with our main track right here. So this is right, this right here is where we made the second edit right here, this keyframe right here. And I'm going to just take this first keyframe and bring it all the way up to about here. And that means from here, because there's no keyframe at the beginning, this entire motion right here, his, his arm's going to be in the same position until here, and then he's going to move it up. So before that, his axe was kind of moving to the side for this entire duration. But since I moved that keyframe up here, now that transition is only happening between these two keyframes. Good, good, good. Okay, so let's take a look. We have now have his axe no longer going through his legs. So this is more like how a uh, well-trained barbarian would be running with his axe. So yeah, this, 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 and then uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead in our timeline a little bit. And so maybe at this point right here, what we want to do is we want to take this keyframe and we want to copy it. And then we want to paste it somewhere over here before he starts his uh, transition. So maybe 
somewhere like, uh, you know, here I think would be fine. So we can paste that keyframe. And then here, what I want to do is just go ahead and press the reset button. And that's going to reset everything back to the same position. So if I press reset, you can see this is the position that it was originally in. And let's take a look at that transition right there. So whoop, and he begins his uh, transition, slow motion, chop. So what we can do is we can also give him some kind of uh, facial animation as well when he's running. And the way we can do that is by, uh, we need to add a camera first. So uh, let's go ahead, back to frame one, and let's go to create and add camera. And then I'm going to press, uh, click on, uh, I keep on wanting to say Mason, uh, Trenton there, and press the J hotkey, and that's going to focus on his face. Let's zoom out a tiny little bit. So this first motion plus clip has its own facial expression. So all I'm going to do here is just link. I'm going to pick parent. I'm going to select our dude. Oh, we're trying to link him to himself here. So if you want to have your camera, you can actually just press the U hotkey, and that'll uh, select your last selected camera in the modify panel here. Again, the U hotkey, pretty useful. And then we can uh, link pick parent. And let's select Trenton. We don't want to select his spine. I want to go into this uh, little ellipses area and select his bone root, and then press OK. Now if I uh, press play, this means war. When he starts running, we're going to be following him. Maybe we want to kind of, uh, you know, move our initial camera position down a slight bit, something like that, and then we can uh, follow him along. So when he's when he's moving, I'm going to actually be using animation. I'm going to be using face puppet. And you can see the uh, different face puppet uh, profiles right here. We can use Heidi, Chuck, Gwyn. Um, I like to use Chuck. He has a nice uh, angry one. You can see, rah, just like that. Looks kind of angry. I think uh, Dylan has a good angry one as well. Yeah, I, I like this kind of look right there. He's like, you talking to me? All right, so we're going to go ahead after he's finished saying this means war. This means war. And then this is where we're going to start his uh, animation at this frame. So let's go ahead and press record. And then I'm going to have him just like running. And then, rah, and then coming down like this. Okay, let's press space to end that, and he's just blinking his eyes right there. What we can do at one point as well, when he's running, uh, maybe about when he's about to do his uh, axe twirl like this, we can have him start yelling. So I'm going to go ahead and create a script here, go to create script, and I have a wave file saved. This one is called uh, Roar, I think I have Roar 2 here is the one that... Roar! There you go. So that's actually me roaring, um, with no pitch adjustment there. So with it, with the uh, roar adjustment, or with the roar adjustment, with the roar right there, we can take a look at his face. Let's use the preview camera here, just to switch to our preview camera. And you can see he's in mid uh, run right there, and his mouth is open like he's roaring. Let's press F3 and take a look at exactly where that is. So again, we can open up our uh, Visine track right there. And when you add in uh, facial expressions, rather, uh, facial puppet, it's going to be in this expression track right here. We can just... Uh, Bring this down a little bit further. And you can see that's the uh, facial puppet clip that I added right there. So puppet clip on the face right there goes all the way to the end. And this is his roar right here. You can see, you can see just like, ruh. there's an R and then an IH and then uh, 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 and then for some reason there's a BM and a TL over there. So let's take a look at his face a little bit closer. So again, um, here, he's going to ruh. And maybe instead of the IH on his face, we can uh, twirl around his face, take a look at that. And instead of the IH, we can have the ah. So that's more like a ra. And then I'm kind of lost of which direction we are here because he keeps twirling around. Oh, it's coming this way. Okay, so we're going to continue with that ah uh, all the way until here. I think this ah is at maximum, yeah, maximum, maximum expressiveness there. Ra and then ah, uh, and then rrr. So maybe, maybe we want to end with a rrr. So at this keyframe here, we can just go like, uh, or maybe this one over here, instead of a BMP, or maybe this one, we'll just bring this a little bit back. Change this to a rrr, and then BMP. His face will just kind of, do like that. Oops, his, his axe is kind of a little close to his face, but we can just uh, modify that in just a bit. So roar like that, and then 
his face is back to normal. So that's how you can, you know, mess around with the uh, facial um, keyframe editing and everything like that for your different visemes. Automatic lip sync is normally pretty good, but it may be a little bit off, and that's how you can adjust everything right there. Okay, so one more thing. After he's uh, finished his, uh, his whole animation, his whole deal right there, we're going to actually make him uh, kind of look like he's out of breath. So where is he right here? Okay, so he's right here. And I'm going to just make that camera invisible there. If we select that camera, we go into the scene here. I don't want to see it, so we can just make that invisible. Well, let's go ahead and uh, play back with our character. This means war! So he comes running at us. Roar! Okay, and then he stops like this. And let's press F3, go into our timeline. So maybe at about this point here, let's go ahead and go to the front here. And I want to use Direct Puppet to kind of uh, have him, um, you know, heaving up and down. So let's go to the motion uh, section here again. And we'll use Direct Puppet. And here we can use his chest. And if I just uh, use the primary rotation for his chest, we can make him go like, like that, like, like he's breathing heavily. Just by using my mouse. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and record a couple breaths like that. Like, if you rotate a little bit, it'll kind of look like he's uh, you know, moving a little bit more realistically. All right, so that's good enough for me. So if we play back, let's take a look. You can see that uh, he'll land. And then... Now uh, we can probably make that a little bit closer too. Um, so press F3, go into our timeline. So here's our puppet clip from when he's you know, starting to do his uh, exhausted uh, breathing. And you can see there's a little bit of a delay between here and here, the end of his attack. So we can actually just take this clip and move it up, something like this. So let's play that back. Uh, maybe a little bit uh, closer. We'll blend it further in. All right, so that's kind of maybe like an idle fighting motion or something like that. Anyways, so that's our animation completed. What we can do now is we can go to our uh, camera. And uh, what I want to do here is add one final emphasis to our animation at the very end. So when he brings his axe down on the ground, we're going to create some shaking with the camera movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move to our, uh, our follow camera angle on the left hand, or on his right hand side here. So we're going to zoom out to about here. Just very similar to the uh, Spartacus video I showed at the beginning here. And then we'll uh, play this back. This means war. And we'll have we'll follow him run along like that, and then Roar! boom, like that. So when he brings his uh, axe down, what I want to do, what I want to do is uh, shake the camera. So I want to do some shaky, shaky stuff. Uh, I have the camera track open right now over here, and you can see that um, at about here, right about here, is where we want to start the shaking of our camera. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click in the transform track right there, and then this. Uh, uh, keyframe right here. We can just, just uh, zoom in actually. Let's hold the Alt key and uh, zoom in. Where are we here? Okay, we're all the way zoomed in. So in this uh, keyframe right here, all I'm going to do is just take my camera and uh, you know move it over here. And then here I can take the camera and move it all the way down here. And then maybe the next frame we can uh, you know bring it over this way. We just want to create that kind of shake uh, illusion of power and, and shaking and everything. And then we can maybe skip a couple frames over here. Whoops. Um, again, I'm just putting like random positions in for my uh, camera. This will take just a second. And let's see what that looks like. Ah! So we, you see when he uh, brings the axe to the ground, ah! we have a boom kind of motion like that. So ah! it looks a lot better. And of course, if you had some, uh, you know, uh, sound effects in there as well, it would look a lot, it would even sound and feel a lot better as well. So let's play that back one more time. This means war. Okay, so we have that nice, you know, trembling. The ground is trembling when he, uh, you know, slashes his axe. And that's kind of how you can add some emphasis. You can make that trembling even more extreme and, uh, you know, add some special sound effects and everything like that as well. Um, but that's about all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. So again, as always, I uh, hope you guys learned something and uh, thanks for watching.